Hey, you're back here with old Barry in the country of the Dominican Republic, North Coast. And uh, as we're all weathering out the uh, lockdown, um, again, thanks goes out to all the information coming in to us. And a big thanks goes to all the questions coming in. Uh, folks inquiring about coming out maybe to visit us a little bit after the planes uh, are coming. Maybe you had a little taste and after watching us for a while, it seems to be a lot of what we are saying makes a lot of sense because you're actually living in it i mean unless you're in utter denial you can't even you can't even dispute it anymore but listen uh, uh, uh so uh hang on i understand flights are starting in the first part of june so on the guys uh, i mean on the emails rather coming in about that we appreciate the inquiries but uh, we're expecting to slowly get rolling nothing's going back to normal i'm telling you that right now but i mean as far as flights coming in and good folks uh, that want to come out and meet us for a second time or uh, the all the inquiries as of late because of all the youtubes uh listen um i want to get off the uh, coronavirus subject here just for a bit because a, a lot of folks have been emailing uh these are new folks, but uh, they really do like some of the ways that us mentors think. And, uh, you know, can you give it any other example? So I, I kind of thought about it for a little bit, and then it dawned on me, uh, because I am Canadian. You know, it's been about 10 years ago, as you guys are watching this graph up here, it's been about 10 years ago that we started to tell um, many of our European and which is far more dominant in number Canadian subscribers um, that if you're locked into like a 401 or any type of uh, pension based in Canadian dollars that's got a severe penalty if you do need to withdraw it that you might want to consider <laughs> taking the hit and boy <laughs> Uh, I remember, whew, I'm glad there was no bottles or anything. A lot of people got really pissed. I mean, out and out, they, people are, oh my God, when, when people have got a little bit of skin in the game, do they ever get emotional? Anyway, let, let's even have some fun with this since I'm under lockdown too. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine trying to say the same stuff I'm telling you that's happening now only when I left Western culture in 1985? Now, and think about this for a moment while we're having uh, just a, you know, a little chat together. Think about this for a moment when mom and dad, one job, would provide you a mortgage, sometimes two cars, quite easily two children through a respectable college, and a nice two-week vacation, and you would still put money in the bank, right? So imagine when the mentors, because like I said, we're getting on over uh, slightly over three decades. We've known each other, and it's just our hobby. Can you imagine the insults? Could you imagine the name-calling? And the ridiculing behind my back and in front of me to my face when all I ever said was, it's not me, it's the numbers. And they viciously all attacked. And just, oh my God, hundreds, perhaps even thousands of incidents. That's how many. 1985. Because back then is when the numbers started to not make sense. I know you, you people are thinking this is all new and, you know, that kind of when we're talking alone we chuckle but with all due respect no this is anything but no you don't shift the world overnight like this it was well prepared for in advance it's just kind of like a tidal wave you know being i made my living at sea for so many years you know when i was younger uh, and and uh, uh my goodness it's like you can go over a tidal wave and it's only two three feet at sea it's only when the friction starts slowing it down because it's going so fast when it gets nearer the shore is when it, it crests up so high because they're often going four or 500 miles an hour. And that's when they crest over and do all their destruction and come in. So because of the velocity of gathering steam over, it's like going downhill, you know, like a bowling ball going downhill. Anyway, uh, so that just brought back, a, uh, you know, I'm going to sidebar a little bit here and there. It's more or less just a fireside chat. It's appreciation. Thank you for so much uh, of what you're doing by getting this truth out. These are not my words. These are just hardcore facts. Anyway, going back to what I wanted to talk about, okay, but we're talking about trying to change the way you look at things. 
and uh, having an open mind. Well, I remember clearly back then is when old Barry started advising uh, my Canadian subscribers that you might want to take the hit. Because, you know, every plan's different. Every person's different. You know, this is about as subjective as it gets. It's only a thought. And it's way out of the, out of the comfort zone of most people. Even now it's out of the comfort zone. And they're going to get chopped off at the neck soon. And even still, 25 years later plus, it's still out of their comfort zone. But I said, you may want to consider taking the hit. Now, why? Because the one thing I bring to the mentors, well, maybe more than one, but one of my responsibilities were, the, were you know, Yossi, Shlomo, and Stefan think I'm pretty good at, and that's 4X. And, and uh, understanding different currencies and understanding where economies are going to be heading. Because that's my passion. I enjoy it. I don't do it to get wealthy. I'm not wealthy. When you have the ability to make money in any type of situation, why would you donate all your time to making more money? I know it's a little bit different than the way you think, but remember, if I need to, I'm paying 16 cents a gallon of gas. You're not. And I'm not trying to sound bold. I'm just trying to get you to think this way a little bit more. So you can kind of have a a backdrop like this and peace and quiet surrounded with food and, and about $400 overhead on, on your lodgings a month. I mean, I don't see nothing all that wrong with it. I like speaking Spanish. I like my friends here. I, I like the people we've helped relocate here. And my goodness, we're as different thinking as, as you could imagine. We're on opposite ends of the polls on that one, but it still doesn't mean that we can't get along and enjoy a meal or a drink together. So it was about 10 years ago, and, and like I'm saying, <laughs> it was, I'm surprised I didn't get hit with bottles. Uh, remember back then, and that's why I keyed up this old graph, because I, I remember numbers. I can't help it. My brain works that way, but I, I'm, I, I'm really enjoying just... Uh, sitting down and chatting with you guys it's uh, because you don't get the chance to interrupt me <laughs> but anyway uh, 10 years ago if you look at it it was peaking out near a dollar six i believe is you can pull up the graph yourself on a 10-year history but if you take it you know and you look at at exactly that and uh my goodness and then just follow this let me get it over uh you know, it, it's just amazing where we are now. So if you took the 25 or back then 30, 30% hit back then and would have reinvested in that, because don't forget your 401s and, and most of them that are that are uh, trying to obtain their gains or maintain their increase in value on the markets are getting bombed. You know, I don't need to tell you anything long right now is getting bombed. It's only a few short bursts if you're brave enough. I am not. We'll talk about that later in this uh, video because that's where I'm getting at. So I wonder a couple of things. I wonder if you were to re-ask some of the Canadians now who are a little bit more open-minded because I'm telling you, nothing's going to replace the U.S. dollar, not at least uh, not at least mid uh, medium term. No, no, there's nothing. There's nothing set to replace it. But still, I don't know because if you look at it. Uh, the paid uh, information sources and, the, and the, the, the only real true artificial intelligence, Socrates from Armstrong, uh, that's paid for. But everything's showing a, a very bearish uh, uh, second, third, fourth quarter for the Canadian dollar and uh, very bullish for the American. Again, that's not because uh, it's, it's really a great deal. It's just look at it this way. Out of an ugly family, it's the only one without buck teeth. Let's look at it that way. It's going to be one of the last soldiers standing, even though, you know, they're all going to get um, eventually taken over. And that's where, we're, where I'm spending some of my time. But continuing on with just this friendly chat, donating some of my time. Um, again, uh, if you were to re-ask some of those Canadians now, I guarantee you they would have been happy with what they could have parlayed that to in the last 30 years uh, by, by a little bit of creative thought and have it still maintain its value today. That's the key, maintain its value today. Um, kind of another way to look at it, if you could somehow fictitiously raise, let's say, Napoleon from the grave, okay? And if you would have asked him, if you had the chance 
to do it all over again, would you have think would you have thought differently about going into the war at Waterloo? Well, what the heck you think he's gonna tell you, man? He went back he with hundreds of thousands of soldiers. I think he left with under three thousand. He's gonna tell you, of course, man, we got our butts handed to us in that. Because the timing wasn't right. So the worst or stupidest idea at the right time can make a fortune. That's what trends, that's what out of the box, that's what, what I study, okay? Um, something as stupid as the Chia Pet. Well, they made millions. I'm not saying it was a great idea. The timing was right, okay? But the best idea is at the wrong time. So kind of now we're in a market, which I'll talk about a bit more, but this, these people, I'm sure a lot of them would have reconsidered their thoughts about, yeah, Barry, I think I would have. I'm pretty sure Napoleon would have reconsidered their thoughts if they only thought a little bit different. Um, I want to talk about uh, another thing. A lot of folks ask me what to be doing, what to be doing, and gosh, folks, that's about as subjective as a question can get. Like, uh, as I, I talk in a lot of times in, in metaphors, just to create clarity because they're so simplistic. But like I say, that's an area where you have to concentrate on the pixel, not on the entire picture, not on the universe. There are subjective decisions that the pixel must, 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 must think about themselves in order to create the picture that we're all connected. So I can't, I guess the best thing I could do would maybe let you know what a little bit what I'm doing, and I'm, I'm sure no expert in it, but I've always been very blessed to not have to donate my whole time to making abundance when I could do it anytime I, I want to turn on or turn off to you know, hit the throttle or not. And, and I'll tell you what, if, you, if you're asking me, I'm just going to tell you uh, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm out of almost everything. Uh, I'm, I have been for a little while now, too. Um, we did do an investment recent. We caught about seven weeks. I didn't want to say anything about it, but we caught about seven weeks ahead, and it wasn't me. My... My salute on this one goes out to Yossi, so a high five to you there, brother. But uh, about six weeks before any even of the private sites, Yossi came back to us and said, let's talk. We need to see. I see something. You guys tell me if I'm right. You guys tell me if I'm wrong. If I'm right, let's pull and jump. And we pulled and jumped into two tanker companies because two months ago, not now that people know about it, eight weeks ago, Okay, we bought into two tanker companies. Why? Because Yossi understood the the amount and how rapid the, the bulk of oil was filling up in terms of the land-based storage units. And he also knew that, no, there was no demand. And he put the, the, the positive and the negative together and created a, a nice epoxy that we uh, we bought some shares into two tanker companies that were pennies at the time. And, and uh, you know, it, it was really, really nice. So what was, you know, let's say, you know, uh, let's say it was nothing was 10, 20. Well, oh, my God, in two weeks, it did well over four times uh, what we did on it. Not to say that we're great. It's just I'm trying to, again, think differently. He caught on to it. I suggest that whoever's good in certain things, if somebody's really good in computers and that, and loves to do research, and someone else is like really good in commodities and really good into uh, understanding nations or the transmission, as I call it, and somebody else is really good at repairing things, and somebody else is really good at knowing self-defense of a particular private area, pool your resources because um, I advise you, you can't properly prepare yourself the way the mentors understand it, and, 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 uh, and that is without a minimum of three families living together, so you can have three eight-hour shifts. Uh, if not, over a very short period of time, you're either going to sacrifice on your supplies or sacrifice on your maintenance or sacrifice on your security. So, uh, you know, begin to understand that. Uh, I mean, that's as 101 as it gets. So um, I, I wanted to uh, just chat about this. And, and so what I'm saying, consider pooling your resources, people that are asking me, uh, you know, things that I should be doing a little bit. I'm, I'm trying to go ahead of myself a little bit because, you know, honestly, there's only so much we can do now without some sort of friction breaking out in the coronavirus. So there's going to be friction. Either it's about getting back to work or it's about the masks versus the non-masks like we've been 
beginning to tell you that. And it's just either way, it's not going to be very well. That's why we're at a medium, minimum of a medium, uh, medium hard landing, medium to medium hard. I don't want to jump in because the last thing I do is fear porn. I don't believe in that at all. I believe in forming a hypothesis from study and uh, and other things. But um, I can't remember where I heard it, but it is getting kind of crazy because, uh, you know, it's bad enough when governments look at you as a milk cow and they're starting to you know, take your taxes left, right, and center. You know, many countries' taxes now are hitting 60, 65 percent. I don't know if my Western viewers are, are aware of that, okay? But when, when you're even that big a sheep, and, and I'm surprised at every nation about how gullible and how they bowed into fear without asking questions. It's phenom It's beyond me. But, but getting to the point, when governments look at you as some sort of milk cow, meaning the milk is taxes, Okay, let's look at this as a farmer, how they would look at it. If you owned a bunch of cows and you had a handful, but not many, but these cows were like 5% of your cows, but my God, they'd give you 15, 20 times the milk as the other cows. Would you or would you not, if you're a smart farmer, give that cow a better stall and better hay and a better surrounding to make it happy? Because after all, it's producing more milk. Well, the milk is taxes. The farmer is your government, okay? You, the cow who has a few dollars, who thinks you own something, you are really the cow. Because you're, you, get, you get a better barn because you, you, you yield more milk. You pay more taxes. Not that you own anything. You own nothing. Begin to recognize this. And... Here's the point I want to make, and I wish I can give credit to who said it to me, but boy, I burn things in my head sometimes, and sometimes I got a great memory, but it just ain't long. But it's, it's one of the people who have a very good blog. I remember that. But when your government treats you as a milk cow, bitch about it. But when that same government starts treating you more like a beef cow than a milk cow, your ass better start getting worried. Till next time, I enjoyed talking with you a bit. I hope we're getting a, at least, well, I could tell by the amount of subscribers and people to see us, and that's great. But we all need to develop a different way of thinking, okay? And doing what we've been doing, it ain't working. And if you think because you're okay for now, but even though you see what's, what's happening all around you, okay, well, like I say, that's fine. Well, 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 you know, like I say, you don't have to convince anybody of anything when time does it for you. Okay. So I really enjoyed a little chat. I'll, as we start getting back to work as promised, I'll be getting into some of the other ideas we're looking at. There are going to be options, but there is going to be a lot of carnage. Okay. So be, be ready for both. Okay. And, uh, and um, until next time, it's old Barry. It was really enjoyable. Okay, hope you enjoy this chat. Bye.